Hello, I'm Lisa Bien, and welcome to Your Best Life with Lisa. My show used to be called Bouncing Back. We changed the name because we are highlighting people who learn how to create and live their best life. I've told many people and groups over the years that once you believe in yourself, the rest of your life will fall into place. We all need to remember that, that it's up to us to create the life that we deserve, the life each of us knows we need to be happy and fulfilled. If you're going to live your best life, you have to find the inner strength to live out your dreams, not the dreams of your parents or that others have for you. You can't listen to the naysayers or even well-intentioned people who don't know what you really want and need. You have to listen to your own voice. It's my sincere hope that each show will encourage you to continue to seek out your best life. Our guest today suffered repeated personal tragedy that left her with severe depression and PTSD. She found her inner strength and changed the trajectory of her life. Today, she's an innovator and living her best life. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Lisa Bien and welcome back. Whether you're an empath or not, you can work at Absolutely. making yourself happy, right? Mm -hmm. It's really about knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is really about knowing yourself. Books, friends, whatever you need, we're yes. all going through stuff. We can all use extra support. You have to be brave enough to admit to yourself that I have the wrong people in my life. Then you have to be brave enough to want to make a change. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Your Best Life with Lisa. Let's welcome Diane Liberto. My initial call with Diana reminded me that this world is truly filled with wonderful people and stories that just need to be shared. She is such an incredible woman. She has internal strength and fortitude. Diana had achieved professionally and was an attorney for Walmart when she, repeated, when she suffered repeated personal tragedies. Her father was struck and killed by a car. A week later, her uncle died in a house fire. Shortly after that, she lost her mother. Despite holding her dream job, her personal losses left her in deep depression, doing nothing but going to work, then coming home and go to sleep. Knowing that she could not continue like this, Diana decided that she had to make things better for herself. She hired a trainer just to keep her company and get, get her moving each day. Diana had hit on something. Walking and talking was just the medicine that she needed. Diana realized that most people couldn't afford to hire a trainer to walk and talk with them. That's when she developed an app called Walk My Mind. She took the leap, left her job, and she's here with us today. Well, that was quite the leap. <laughs> it was a leap. That was a I leap. I jumped off a building. <laughs> Wait, isn't that like Superman, now you're Superwoman? <laughs> sort of, I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, you hear stories like that all the time. Women who are just, not just interested in women, but you know, people. fabulous people, <laughs> thank you, let all lost words, fabulous people that say, I want to create this business and they take the leap and you know, they don't have the chutzpah or the, you know, whatever it is. It's scary. It's scary. Sometimes it's super I think scary. we just do things I always say, I don't think about the consequences. I just go. I jump in a pool and I pray that there's a life vest. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, it is it is that scary. Right? It is that scary. Oh, my God. Well, I, I got to say, your story is phenomenal to me. Thank I just, you. I, you've been through Thank so you. much. But it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't always phenomenal. You know, it wasn't always where you are today. But you were born and raised on a farm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're, we're here today at Temple University, and I don't think a lot of us know, or I certainly don't, what life is like on a farm. So take us back to the time when, you know, here you are, born and raised, what kind of farm? Vegetables and fruit. That's and, awesome. Uh, and we had, you know, we had animals just for ourselves, but it was basically a, a truck farm, they call it. Uh, we had every every vegetable everything you can think of every fruit apple trees and peach trees and we had plums we had watermelon and cantaloupe and corn and tomatoes and everything everything you can think of and i'm getting hungry oh it's around i know lunchtime, it's, right? it really was pretty <laughs> amazing and i mean i realize now because you can't really get stuff like that anymore that tastes like that that's that phenomenal just hearing you tell your yeah, story about it what it was amazing like. and my um my grandparents had come from italy and so they cooked, oh my God, they made all the fresh pastas and we had everything amazing. We would get up at five in the morning, go to the chickens, get the eggs, come back in, have breakfast, 
just like, oh my God. yeah, it was it's really like a movie. super. It was it's like a movie. It was like a movie. It was really super. Come home from school, there'd be pizza and in, in the, you know, just for your snack. It was really super. That sounds pretty awesome, right? It oh was pretty awesome. Wait a second. It was awesome. And it's not that far from here. Hamilton. Grew up. Hamilton well, outside Jersey. Blue right. Anchor, Blue Anchor, New Jersey. Then I moved to Hamilton. That was like moving to the big city. <laughs> I know. It was. That's awesome. It was. So it, everybody in Blue Anchor was my cousin. <laughs> That's so funny. So you grew up, you know what, I could just talk about growing up on a farm, but I don't think people want to hear about well, that all day. So you grew up on good. a farm, which sounds pretty special and amazing, and close relationship with your parents, right? Yes, yes. And my aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents. That was all uh, really great. But then we did move. When I was in sixth grade, we moved to Hamilton, and that was kind of uh, the blueberry capital of the world. Right, and I mean, it was seven miles away, but it was very different. We had sidewalks, you know. I never mm -hmm. had a sidewalk. I rode my bike on gravel. I didn't know what it was like. It was really, really different. Um, and then I graduated from Hamilton High School. So I would imagine. I would imagine that um, you, you're saying you're, you're you know grew up in this fabulous farm. Mom and dad and cousins are all around. Sounds, it sounds like a, a little house on the prairie a little bit. Like sort it sounds, of. There's a lot like of work, story, too, yeah, honestly. But it, it sounds like a storybook. <laughs> but, so they had this expectation, right? What was the expectation? Were you going to be, a, what, were you going to stay on the farm? You know, I don't think that my father would have expected me to stay on the farm. I think he would have expected my brother right, not me. He taught him how to ride the tractor, not me. I always wanted to ride the tractor. How come well, I could? Like that. But no, um, <laughs> so I don't think that's what they expected, but um, they expected me to, to get a job, you know, go to work. I worked really uh, all my life. I mean, you grow up on a farm, you're working. You're really right, working you from working. your earliest uh, memory. You're doing stuff. But isn't that interesting? The, the expectation was that, and I think it's interesting too, that your brother got to learn how to yeah, you did it, and I didn't. And but, that would be completely different today, right? Right, because fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I bought a farm. Oh wait, you have a farm now? I, well, I, I've sold it oh, since, okay. but I did buy a farm, and my father came to live with me, and we planted a vineyard together, and he taught me everything, how to ride the tractor, how to lay out the rows, how to put the equipment on the back, how to put the spray in the thing. We did the whole thing. So you know. Fast forward, he was all about me doing everything. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But so you told me a story when we were talking uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were talking, and you told me a story that your mom actually said to you, "You just get a job." Well, what happened was my mom and dad split up. Okay. And so then my mom and the kids, we moved to Hampton. It was really hard for her, you know, as a single mom. And um, we also had I have a brother who's mentally challenged and like she had to put him in a home. It was really, really hard for my mom. So she didn't have the money to send me to college. She just didn't. Not that she didn't want me to be the best in school and really learn, but she couldn't do it. I mean, and let's face it, who can, some people can't even afford to do it today. Right. I mean, so, I mean, we lived in a little apartment, you know, she slept on a sofa bed. It wasn't, it wasn't great. And, um, and so I understood, but it was also very disappointing because I really did try super hard in school, you know, and I, did, I wanted to go to college. I, I, I was like, she goes, well, what are you gonna do? You don't, you, know, you don't have the money, you're gonna go to college. What do you think you're gonna be? I said, I'm gonna be a doctor. And she said, no, she said, we can't be doctors and lawyers. That's what she said, because that's where she was at the time. Oh no, I, you know, I, I think I it's got interesting. It. And I said, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, I'm gonna figure it out. And I did, um, actually I did my first semester at Temple. <gasps> Yay. Yeah. But um, I was driving here in a Volkswagen Beetle with the, the bottom was, I could see the road, you know, it was old, it was all decrepit and um, it, it was hard on me because I was doing it all by myself mm -hmm. and I didn't really have any, uh, role model, I didn't have anybody at that time, no mentor for mm -hmm. any of that. And so then I left there, I went to Glassboro, which was closer to drive. Mm -hmm. And um, and then my mother, the casinos opened. And I'm like, so poor. I mean, I'm telling you, I am so poor. And she says, you should get a job as a cocktail waitress, you should go. And she, so she got me all the papers and I applied and I got the job and I left school. So I left school. 
So I quit you, school. You leave school. How old are you when you leave school? So I was 20, no, 18. I, was, I only did my first two years, so maybe I was 20. Okay. You know, I was old enough to get the job at the casinos. So. It's so interesting how people who just mean so well, you know, they mean well, like mom, dad, aunts, uncles, whatever, they say things like, well, you should just you know, go to beauty school or be, become a waitress. Yeah, she, she told me to be a cashier at the Acme or whatever because I could be in the union. And like I said, I, I'm, I've lost my mom. I, I understand where she was coming from. My grandmother, my grandmother on the farm, she always said, get an education, get an education. So somebody don't was end in up your like ear, me. Right. Yes, don't end up like me. Get an education, get an education. So I really did think that's what, that was the road. You know, that was the road I had to take. It was just that, I guess my mom couldn't envision how that could happen in the position we were in. Right, because you were poor. We were really, yeah, it was, we were hurting at that time. So you were poor and you're waitressing how do oh, you I was making so much money. Oh, it's the I best when you're a waitress. I was like, oh my God, look at all this money. I was buying shoes. I was so foolish because I didn't really know what to do. You didn't know what to do with your money I either, didn't right? know what to do. So, so I really advise people not to do that. Like I know, I always say, I wish... <laughs> I mean, my parents were really good. They were really, um, really, really good with me. They kept saying, you know, save your money, save your money. And I kept saying, yeah, I'll save it. And you know, my dad would say, if you, and, and, and my dad is still alive today. And I have to say, if I would have listened to him, and he's probably watching, he'd be like, right, oh. right, right, right. But he used to say to me, if you would take half of what you would make and save it, you'll have it. But, right. we, you know, unfortunately, when we're a certain age, we oh, don't listen to our parents. Right. We listen to our parents when it's like convenient like exactly. they're trying to give us good advice and they're saying save your money we're like nah we don't need to save our right. money i've got the rest of my life to save my money right, right now i'm going to spend my money you so know? you're having so, <laughs> so you're making <laughs> so you're making all this money <laughs> i was making a lot i was making a lot of money so, i because i was a very um i never quit when i was cocktail waitressing i didn't take a break so this I is what we're going to do. We're going to take a break right here. <laughs> Real quick, we're going to take a break, and we'll continue our conversation with Diana Liberto when we come right back. Because of you, I felt hopeless. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of you, I felt wanted and not alone in this world. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included, and I knew that I was going to be okay. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Welcome back. We're talking with Diana Liberto about her personal struggles and how she created her best life. So before our break, we were talking about how you're making all this money, <laughs> left school because you were not making money. Now you're making money, but you're not in school. All right. right. I'm not okay. in school. So and I get you... married and I have two little so children. So you got married and, during that And period. I'm still cocktail waitressing. And now, now I How go old were you? I'm just curious. Early 20s. I'm still in my 20s. Oh, so you got married young. Okay, yeah. so you're in your yeah. 20s. Yeah. You're and I get, and I have two sons, and um, I went on day shift, and now I'm not making any money because mm. the casino, it was like, the, I don't know, bad time in the 80s, you know, it was bad. And so now I'm really not making that much money. I have two little babies, um, and I decide I don't want to be a 40-year-old cocktail waitress. Like, I was looking ahead. 
I said, and I remember talking to the other girls. I said, you know what? I'm not going to be a 40-year-old cocktail waitress. What are you going to do? I, I'm going to do something. I'm going to go back to school. And I did. I went back to school. It was hard because now I have two babies. My God, now it was really hard because now you had, right. how old were your boys? One was, um, he was 14 months, and I think the other one was just turning it was a little over four. Yeah. yeah, it's really hard. It was really, really hard. And and my husband at the time, he said, I married a cocktail waitress, not somebody who's going to school. And oh. so he didn't really like the idea. That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's like it's almost like people, when they start dating you or marry you or whatever, they, they, they want you to stay in that, in that little, little box. In that little box. Right. In, in that role. Right. And you were like, oh, no. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You are like, yeah, you, you don't know me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are? Okay. Oh so yeah, then you no. I left and I got divorced and I and I so now I'm single mom, trying to finish my undergraduate degree, which I did and it was very hard. And I wanted Just being to go. a single mom. Yeah. In itself is hard. It's very so hard. So now you're a single mom and getting your undergraduate degree. At right. this point, what school did you go to? Glassboro. Okay, we went back to Glassboro. Right. Okay. So which is now Rowan, and then um, I wanted to go to law school, you know, and. I didn't have many choices, really. I mean, I had to stay kind of close to home, and um, I had—I didn't even really—I didn't even know a lawyer. Uh, so, what made you decide to go to law school? Well, that's again a sort of a half mentor story, and my story goes all over the place. But I—I I was going to be—I um, thought about going to school for political science. That was my major, and maybe getting a, a master's in that. And I was working on a campaign. And I met some people, and one became a very good friend of mine and a mentor, and he still is to this day. And he said, you won't make any money doing that. He said, you should go to law school. I was like, how, how am I going to do that? <laughs> <You're> like, oh, <laughs> really? How am I going to do that? And he said, you can do it. See, I think that's an important, uh, important place to stop for a second, too, though. I think it's important that we all remember that sometimes all we need is someone to tap us on the shoulder mm -hmm. and give us that message that we can do it or you right. can do it, because that, that's actually what happened here for me at Temple. I had a professor that basically said, you know, you, you can do this. You're, you're pretty smart. So I think it's interesting that mm -hmm. we, people along the way can say such important messages that can yeah. either help inspire us or take us right down. Yes, and, it's right? so true. It's so true. And um, you know, I, I thank him to this day. And he also told me, you know, I wasn't going to be able to go to a very expensive school or anything, so I wanted to be able to go locally. Mm -hmm. And he said, so if you're going to go to a local school and you're not going to go to an Ivy League school, uh, the important thing is to come out really close to the top. Yeah, you're I hear not going to make school. enough money to pay back all the student loans that you've had to borrow. I had to borrow so much money, for not only for me to live, but to support my kids, really, you know? So my loans were huge, and I had that as my impetus. Oh my God, if I don't do the best, if I don't, I'm never gonna be able to pay back these loans. I'm gonna be in debt for the rest of my life. So, so you go to law school. I go, Did and I- Did you go locally? I went to Rutgers and Camden. Okay. And I worked really, really, really hard. So you're in law school full time. I mean, there's no such. Is there like a part? People don't go to law school I full time. I think they can. Or they can but night. you went full time. I went. Okay, so you're a full time law, law student, student with two little with boys. With two little boys. Were you working at the time too? No, no, okay. not for the first two years because okay. I went full time. Um, I worked in the summers though. Uh, but no, I lived off my student loans. And do you think that that working? Do you think that that working hard in the farm and knowing what hard work felt like and that taught you what Absolutely. that's like getting up in the morning and knowing that you yes. have a full day ahead of you and there is no I'm tired. No, you couldn't be tired. You couldn't be tired. You couldn't, be tired. You couldn't allow yourself mm -mm. to be tired. Okay, so you go to law school. I go to law graduate school. on top of your class. Close there. Close close to. I okay. get a federal clerkship, which was the only one in, in my class, which was great. And then I went to work. And as a lawyer. And, and um, you were there for a while, right? I worked in Philadelphia for a number of years, and then I went to Arkansas, and I worked for Walmart. And then that's where we picked up with the story mm -hmm. of all the terrible stuff happening. And uh, by then, I had come back. So hold on. I want to stop for one second, because you've worked really hard now, right? And you're like, OK, so now here's all the stuff, right? So 
you're born and raised on a farm. Basically, no one's no one's giving you messages, positive messages of saying, you know, you can do this, you can be whatever you want. Basically, people are like, oh, go become a waitress. And you do that, you get married, you find yourself in a relationship where the man wants to keep you in a box. Note, women don't belong in boxes. <laughs> then, so then you break out of that box, and now you're in law school. Oh, now she gets a great job at Walmart, life is good. Yep, pretty good. Okay. Now what happens? I mean, I think it's important to know, even when you get your great job, you know, it's not always all good anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm saying in sense of... But, uh, yeah, excellent I point. achieved. Excellent point. Right. Great. What I'm saying, great point. I'm saying is you achieved your goals. I achieved right? my goals. You're no longer that cocktail waitress. Right. You went to school. You right. got your education. Right. Right. And now you... I did, all, I did the things I set out to do. And, um, and still working very hard. One of my father's favorite sayings uh, about me when he would talk about me he'd say she's not lazy <laughs> yeah, clearly you're not lazy that was, like, clearly you're that not was lazy. his biggest compliment she's not lazy and then sweet though <laughs> yeah so then you're um so then I um I moved back home I was still working for Walmart but I was able to come back home uh I changed what I was doing for them so I started uh being the person over employment law in, uh, on the East Coast, so I was able to come home because my parents were aging at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, I was home, and uh, that's when a lot of that terrible stuff terrible stuff happened. I'll say it. So yeah, so <laughs> bad stuff happened. So that's when the bad, really bad stuff is. And if I remember it correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were with your dad prior to him. Yes, being I was at his house. I stopped house to for get lunch. Stuff, get yeah. stuff for lunch, and you and said, then I have to go." have to go and he would cross the street and he was hit by a right car I wasn't go. even that far away I mm. turned right around yeah I'm sorry. all right so I'm gonna we're like we're just taking a minute it was yeah. yeah it's bad that's pretty I couldn't even imagine what that's like and then you it was the my dad's brother your dad's brother is he dies yeah. in a, fl a fire yes and then the news catches a hold of that you know yes. two brothers die in a fire right. and it's terrible terrible and then your mom has this massive heart attack has a massive and she's heart sick attack. and then she then we lose her so you really did have PTSD and depression terrible, terrible. and he, what's interesting and I uh, is that when I hear depression people use that term so loosely like oh, I'm having a bad day I'm depressed but the more and more that we learn about depression it's a it's yeah, serious it's diagnosis mm -hmm. that De debilitating. It's a serious diagnosis that we can't just say, oh, I'm having a bad day, right? Mm -hmm. But you had the bandwidth to know that you were depressed, like you knew that something wasn't right, right? Oh, oh yeah, you know that because you're not yourself. You lose yourself. You know, you really do. You, um, you don't want to, you, you, your spirit is gone. I think that's what really happens is your spirit gets crushed and you don't want to do anything. You don't want to be anything. You know yeah. you have to go to work. Right. But you know you have to go to work. And you go to work, but then you come home and all you, your joy is gone. And you, but you have to find it right for your children because your children are how old at this point? So now uh, my children are adults at that point. Okay. Um, but you know it was hard. It was hard for the whole family. It was hard. Uh, you, you have to find it for yourself too. Oh. I mean, you have to, because you just can't keep Absolutely. sitting there. You have to, you, you, if you keep sitting there, what's going to happen to you? What's, you have to do something. You have to do something. And I think that's such an important message is you have to do something. And, you know, we've done, I've done a lot of shows about depression and anxiety and death by suicide. And, um, and the message is always do something, do something. And there's always resources out there to mm -hmm. get you mm -hmm. what you need, your yeah. help, right? Yeah. And, you know, you had the bandwidth at this point to call somebody, right? Call yes. a trainer. I did. I called a woman I used to work out with. I used to pay as a trainer. And I said, look, I basically have been sitting for a year. I, I'm not making that up. And I said, I need just to go outside and take a walk. So would you please come over, I'll pay you. Knock on my door, drag me out, and make me take a walk. I hear that a lot um, sometimes from people who are really sick, like with chemo as well, because chemo makes you tired. Mm -hmm. And so, but I love and applaud the fact that, you know, through it all, you constantly find your way. And, and I think it's so important that everyone understands that 
there's no right way. No. There's no a hundred percent your way or their way. No. You know, like you knew you were you knew you're like, oh, it's been a year. Right. And I'm sitting here. Right. And I'm just sitting here and right. not doing anything and you mm -hmm. hired this and then not only do you not only you're so incredible. I'm no, like, oh, thank you. I'm so in all of you so. because I mean, this is what people have to do to get through life, right? Yes, they do, but not everyone has to do it in, in quite the way that, you know, with, with, with dignity and grace that it sounds like you did, because not only did you get this trainer, start, you know, start walking, you also took this to the next point and created a business, right, to help other people, mm -hmm. and that to me is all inspiring. So you, what is it? So what, what happened, so we took the walk the first day, and... Um, the just next for the day. essence of time, because we're yes. running out of time. Oh, I just I'm need. Sorry. It's okay. I want you to talk real quick about your company. Okay. And, so and I asked her to come back the next day, and while we were walking the next day, as I said, you know, this is incredible. I should do this for other people, and it just kept staying in my mind, staying in my mind, staying in my mind, and finally I started the company, and it's called Walk My Mind. That's awesome. Well. I wish we had more time to talk about Walk My Mind, but you can go yep. and check it out. My thanks to uh, <laughs> my guest, Diana Liberto, for Thank sharing you. her experiences and insights. Today's guest reminds us that even at our lowest possible points, you can, walk, you can work through the pain and sadness and build or rebuild a better life, a life of, uh, each of us deserves. We are all born into different circumstances and face hardships. Some are greater than others. In a perfect world, there would be no pain and no sadness and no suffering. But we should always remember that even when your life seems hard, you can reach the joy, reach for that joy and the happiness, and it's always out there, just waiting for you to take the first step and reach for a better life. Remember that you are on your journey, that there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. Some people are really good at facing their challenges head on, and others may need extra support. But in the end, we can all rise up be strong, and live our best possible lives. Once again, I'm Lisa Vianne, and join me next time on Your Best Life with Lisa. Hello, I'm Lisa Vianne, and welcome back. Whether you're an empath or not, you can work at Absolutely. making yourself happy, right? Mm -hmm. It's really about knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is really about knowing yourself. Books, friends, whatever you need, we're yes. all going through stuff, we can all use extra support. You have to be brave enough to admit to yourself that I have the wrong people in my life. Then you have to be brave enough to want to make a change.